everybody, and welcome to Championship Bowling's All-Star Television Tournament from the beautiful Orchard Twin Bowl here in Skokie, Illinois. This is Fred Wolf, and we have reached our last match in the semifinals. It'll be Billy G, as we'll call him, against Ray Blue. Billy G, grows from Detroit, Golden BF Ski. We'll shorten it up for you. Too high, on the nose, three pins. Well, it could sound like possibly we were covering uh, the Kentucky Derby or out at your favorite racetrack. We have Billy G going against Little R in a match race. Three furlongs. Golombievsky for 12 games, averaging 220.6. Bluth for 12 games. He's got it. Averaging 221 on the nose. Bluth has won nine, lost two, and tied one. Golombievsky has won ten and lost two. This match, three games, total pins, will determine our two finalists. Bluth throws Brooklyn side, gets across, kicks it around, and he has a strike in the first frame. These two boys don't need too much. Kowalik's made it easy for him when he went six consecutive games in the semifinals without getting a 200 score. And Eddie, who had bowled brilliantly in his first three matches, 682, 664, 673, had 577 against Booth and 570 against Golombievsky. It's total pinfall for six games in the semifinals. Low man drops out. Booth with two. So actually, we may see these two boys over the next three weeks. This week, we'll wind up the semifinals. Then they will start from scratch and bowl six games over two weeks for the championship of championship bowling's all-star television tournament from Skokie, Illinois. Ten pin and Golombievsky gets a good rock out of it, but it does not go down. Bluth out in front. So this probably, uh, well, at least it looks like it, could be just a tune-up before the big explosion in the finals. At the 10-pin, Billy covers. <laughs> Billy weighing about 133 pounds. That's all, ring and wet. A Grand Rapids product, born in Grand Rapids in 1929. Not much difference here in ages, although Bluth, of course, has probably been a big timer just a little longer. Ray was born in 1928, Billy in 1929. There's a nice lift. He's there. First strike. You have quite a contrast in styles here. Ray, who is just inside the 15-foot mark on the approach, Keeps that ball to the right side of the body. Hand position quite firm. Four. Looked like the four seven. He kicked the seven out. Nothing but the four pin. Ray really drifts up there. Very definitely concentrating on every step and shuffle that he makes. Billy G has just a little different style in that he holds the ball in the palm of his left hand. Bluth here holds the entire ball in his right hand. And that he throws it away. He has to spare. So Ray will move to the left. Now we couldn't very well call Bluth from the old school. Billy G has already been tagged as the youngster from the new school. But Ray likes to crank them up occasionally. Ray goes wider than Billy. In other words, he has that hook or curve, as you would want to call it, and plays slightly more inside than Golombievsky. So it'll be interesting here over the next nine games. There it is. Just how these boys will master these match game conditions. These television lanes have been completely resurfaced to American Bowling Congress specifications. The pins are brand new. And boy, they've got to knock them down. Billy G throws in double. Boy, that was just as solid as you could get it. 
On the right side, lane 62, when Golubievsky is bearing down, I'll tell you, that ball goes straight as a string. He plays about three-quarter inside, throws it right at the 1-3 pocket, and it stays there. So this game, practically even to the pin. They're both on strikes. We go in the fifth. Billy shakes one up. Number three. Now well, let's take a look now at Bluth. Ray uses his right foot, right toe, to get it where he wants it. He heals the 15-foot mark with his left heel. Moves left foot first. The lift, he's out there. Here it comes. And the old accordion ball. Now, it didn't look like Ray was going to get there. So at the end of five frames in the first game, in the last match in the semifinals, it's Billy G, 39 on three. Bluth, 69 on two. Sixth frame, second game. Actually, we're tied at the pin. If you fill in the 30s, both boys on doubles. 69, blue throws. He's there. Kicks that four pin out of there again. So we have a couple of fellas who have been averaging 220 and 221 for 12 games, and it looks like their averages are not going to suffer one bit. Here's Billy G, just outside the 12-foot line. Four steps. The reach, he throws, he's in. He leaves. Snake eyes. 8-10. Now, Golubievsky went around just a little bit that time. He didn't hold that straight line that we referred to a little while ago. And there's the difference. From the new school, Billy does not crank them. He lets the ball roll. And not having enough on that ball coming in from the outside, the result, an 8-10. He'll take one. So, Bluth now out in front. After Billy G's triple, and an 8-10 stopped him cold. So Bluth has taken a 30-pin lead if he gets another strike. An 8-10 split between strikes. Bluth would have a 34-pin lead. One ball, 34 pins. Doesn't sound possible, does it? Here he is, right back, and he carries all but the seven. Oh, man, that pin was half over. He hit that one coming and going. The Brunswick automatic pin setter sets that seven pin back, and there's the wobble back. And a lot of people might say, well, it would have fallen. Really, it would not have fallen if it would have fallen when the... Brunswick automatic pin setter set it back down. It would have fallen. Even then, it would have had to have been re-spot. There it is. So Billy started with two spares. He's been in there ever since. Bluth started with two, then a four pin, and he is working on three. About ready to charge out into an early lead. In the seventh, throws there, in, carries all but the four pin. The four pin stopped him again. That's two fours. Ray just a little tight. Ray has a couple of uh, fine looking boys, Michael and Thomas, and a little daughter named Pamela. He's got it. Ray's wife, Carol, just doesn't have too much time to throw a bowling ball. She lets Dad do the work. But Mike and Thomas pay quite a lot of attention to what Dad is doing around the nation. A member of the Brunswick Advisory Staff and one of the real great stars. A fellow who has won just about everything. He'd like to win a national all-star. That's the one that keeps slipping away from him. Here it comes. Back there. He's got the strike in the eight, and Bluth could have been all the way. Two four pins. So Billy G trails by 23 pins. We're in the eighth frame of the first game. Look out. Billy short again over here. 
Left the 8-10 on a triple, on a pocket hit. That time didn't get there at all. He had the 2-4-5 finally kicked him around until he has nothing but the 5-10. And Golovievsky missed this one in his match with Don Ellis. There it is. Interesting, these two boys uh, shooting within a pin of each other, 221 and 220, their winnings up to this match blew $3,700. Golubieski, $3,725. And they're going now for the two big ones. 10000 to the eventual winner, 5000 to the runner-up. Billy throws, he's there. So Billy will move right in the 10th on the big strike. And Ray Bluth moving in now. Ray's high game has been 255. He has a chance to top that if he goes all the way. 258. He's had eight balls in the pocket. We're in the ninth. That'll have to hurry. Here it comes, and he almost got the A-10. The boys are working on the right side. Ray went around, and that ball just doesn't seem to get there when you take the scenic route, as the boys call it. You've got to keep them pretty tight here on lane 62 at Orchard Twin Bowl in Skokie, Illinois. Championship owns all-star television tournament. Winding up the semifinals, Fred Wolf along with Whitey Harris. Whitey, who is well acquainted with Ray, of course, knows a lot of the peculiarities of his style and has been tipping us off to a few things here. The blooper, they still call him that in St. Louis. We've kidded Ray a lot about it when he comes into the Motor City. fellow that used to carry his bowling ball over his shoulder, and he had a motorcycle when he was a youngster. Four, six, seven, and Billy G has a chance to win the first game. Eddie Kowalik sitting up there in the first row, just to our right of the bowler set tee, hoping for something to happen. He has posted 11.47. Bluth had 6.43, Golubievsky 6.75. They must top 11.47 to get into the finals. Bluth with an opener in the 10th, 2.14. So Billy needs two strikes to win this first game. One is not enough. Here's the first one. Or when he gets it up there and uh, gives it that little extra speed he can really line them in and he needed a strike in that match with don ellis he had to get eight pins to win and he just threw that ball right through the one three pocket this one's worth fifty dollars game money in the first game he's too high too high ray bluth the winner by a couple of pins It'll be 212 with the cover here, the 310, 214 for Bluth. Both these boys need about 500 to eliminate Eddie Koalix. In fact, Billy G doesn't even need 500. He had the 675. Bluth needs a little over 500. There it is, getting every single penny good get. So in the first game, Bluth 214, Golombievsky 212. We'll be back for game number two in just one moment. From Skokie, Illinois, at the Orchard Twin Bowl, it's Championship Bowling's All-Star Television Tournament. Right now, out along the network, a word from our friendly hosts. <laughs> 